Hello, in this video we'll be going over some a basic motion problem. Pretty much this will be um this is tailored to the Queensland um curriculum for physics. Uh basically it's just a projectile question and um motion in the horizontal and vertical direction. So this is the question we'll be doing in today's video. So this is taken out of uh study buddy for the Queensland curriculum. So if you want to find this question Search up um, Oxford Study Buddy Exam Revision Guide, Units 3 and 4, Volume 1, from QCE Physics. Uh, it's a really good book if you're studying physics and you want to get well in your exams. I recommend buying this book. Alright, so this is a standard question that you mates, you will probably see on an exam. A helicopter is travelling horizontally. Oh, oops, what's this? Save. Sorry. Save as, yeah, just save that. Right. Okay, right. a helicopter is traveling horizontally at a velocity of 110 meters per second and is a height of 75 meters above a point Q on the horizontal ground when it releases a package. So this, when it's up here, it's going to drop like a box and it's going to start falling. Well, it, won't, it will be going straight down, but its path is going to look something like this. Because it's going to have a vertical component, so we can already see that. Because we're going to have um, gravity pulling it down, and we have this motion going this way. So its path is going to be like that. That's where we can get like the picture from just this um, sentence up here. Alright, determine how long it will take the package to reach the ground. Express, express your answer to two decimal places. Alright, so when you're solving these problems, this um, you're going to have to use the equations of motion. So this is the first one, v equals u plus at. V equals u plus at. Um, S equals ut plus a half at squared. And the third one is V squared equals U squared plus 2AS. There is another one, but you only, you can solve pretty much every problem just using this, these equations here. If you have any three, so um, V is final velocity. U is initial velocity. A is acceleration. And of course, T is time, and S, this is a weird one, it's like distance, or you might be familiar with displacement. Right, so that's what each symbol means in these equations, so if you want to copy that down, that's fine, but today's video isn't really about that, it's mo mostly about just this question here. Alright, so with this question, you need, there's a, there's a really, um, it's hard to, well, it's not a hard concept to grasp, but a lot of students miss this. Horizontal motion, so motion going in, let's say, the x direction, and vertical motion, let's say, motion going in the y direction, are independent of one another. Now, what does that mean? Basically, um, any motion in this direction won't affect the motion in this direction, because it can't. The only thing that can that affects one or the other is well the one thing that links horizontal motion and vertical motion together is time. So in this problem here, if you just threw a, if you had no gravity, let's say there's no vertical motion, there's no gravity. If the package was dropped, it would just continue going in this direction at 110 meters per second because of the motion of the helicopter. However, since we have um, a, a velocity or a force pulling it down, it's going to start going down like this. It's still going to have a vertical, it's still, uh, not a vertical, it's still going to have horizontal velocity. And if there was no wind resistance, its horizontal motion would be the same. So, let's say um, initial velocity in the x direction would be the same as the final velocity in the x direction with no wind resistance. A lot of times in physics problems you can make this assumption that there is no wind resistance just so the problem's easier to solve. But in the real world that's not the case. Um, with basically 
it's time of flight. So velocity is distance over time. So therefore distance is velocity times time. So the distance, let's, let's put subscripts x. So this is just in the x direction. And I'm just going to change that to u because u is the same as v in the horizontal direction. If you, basically the distance is is the product of basically the horizontal velocity and the time. So if you make t smaller, its distance is going to travel horizontally is going to be smaller. So if this object, if gravity is really strong and it pulls it to the ground straight away, its time of flight is going to be very small. And if its time of flight is very small, its horizontal distance is going to be very small. So if it was just dropped, the object was dropped, its initial velocity in the y direction, so u of y, would be 0 meters per second. Okay, so that's just some of the theory behind motion. Let's get actually to solving this problem. So I'm going to leave those equations up there. If you want an in-depth video on more complicated motion, just leave something in the comments. So determine how long it will take the package to reach the ground. So this question is asking for its time of flight. All right, how do we find its time of flight? So to find its time of flight, we need to look at the vertical motion. So I'm just going to write a vertical here, and I'm going to use I'm going to write out my letters. So I have U, T, um, S, and what else? Oh, acceleration, of course. And I'm just going to put subscripts here. So u of y, s of y, acceleration I'll leave as that. So we're trying to find this. Um, we've been given the word release. So if you drop something, its initial velocity is zero. So in this case, its initial velocity in the vertical direction is zero meters per second. So they haven't indirectly given you, they haven't indirectly said that, but they have given you that by this word here, release. Another common word is dropped. You will see in physics books. And that's why the physics students, you have to make the assumption, when, well, you know, if you drop something, its initial velocity, while it starts falling down straight away, that's only due to gravity. It's not because it has an initial velocity. It doesn't. It's just still. If gravity wasn't there, the object would stay in place. All right, so that's a key thing. A lot of physics students would get stuck on that and wouldn't know what that is. So we have um, our initial velocity in the y direction. We've also been given this distance here. Now, just looking at this, we're going to need this equation here because... We also know, um, oh, we also know acceleration is going to be negative 9.8 meters per second squared because it's happening on Earth. Unless they specify, they'll have to give you a different um, acceleration due to gravity or they could ask you to find the gravity if you're on a different planet. But most physics questions will happen on Earth, so it's always negative 9.8 meters per second per second. Alright, so just looking at the stuff we have here, we've also been given this. I'm just going to write this over here, but I'm going to leave the sign. I'm going to leave this sign empty for a sec. So we're going to need this equation up here. So I'm just going to rub out these other two. You probably could use the other two, but I just want to use this one to demonstrate something. Right. Let's say we have, so we've got our initial velocity. We've got our S of distance and our acceleration. So let's just plug this in. So we have 75 equals 0 times T plus a half times negative 9.8 times t squared. That's going to go away because it's zero. So we can move this across here closer to 70. Oh, whoops. We can move that there. Right. Can you see the problem I'm going to have here now? If I divide by, I'm just going to actually move this up here. If I were to divide by um, a half of negative 9.8 to get t by itself, I get over here and we have t squared equals 75 over a half of negative 9.8. 
to get t by itself, I'm going to have to square root. So t is going to be the square root of this here. But this here is a negative number. You can't square root a negative number in physics. Well, you can, but no, not really. So when I'm looking, if I have u in the vertical direction is zero, you must put a negative sign in front of your vertical displacement. That way it will give you your time of flight. Because we know there's a time of flight because it's getting dropped. So there will be a time it will take to hit the ground. So we know it's not error, which you'll get on your calculator if you put a negative number in here. We know there's a time of flight. So in special cases like this, you have to put the negative sign if the, if the, vertical, the initial vertical velocity is zero. However, if this was some number, then you would make this positive. But since if u in the vertical direction is zero, the s must be negative. You must put it as negative, right? Because if we put the negative here, this whole thing will become a positive value, right? Cool. All right, plugging that into our calculator. T, so I've just plugged this in under the square root. So I'm going to have t is the square root of 75 over a half over 9.8. I get wrong. I got rid of my negative sign because it divided by a negative up here. So those cancel. And putting that into the calculator, t is approximately 3.91 seconds. Now the question is asking for two decimal places. So that is fine. So 3.1, 3.91 seconds. Boom, and you'd get your mark. Right, cool. Now I'm just going to rub out all of this and we'll take a look at part two of this particular question. This is a very short question, but a lot of students could get it wrong if they didn't understand their motion and how some of these equations work. All right. Calculate how far from Q, so Q is here. I'm just going to get rid of this now. That there. Calculate how far from Q the package will land. So it's pa the package is going to land something like this. So it's asking to find the distance it lands from Q. So Q is the um, the horizontal position of the helicopter when it's dropped. But the package here is going to travel in this motion. It's going to travel like in a parabola. It's going to go like that. So this is Q. It's asking us to find this distance here. So we're going to have to look at our horizontal motion. So in a horizontal motion and vertical motion, the time is the same. So T is 3.1 seconds. There's no air resistance, so there's no acceleration. So we can basically just use um, distance is velocity times time and put substrate X. Now we've been given 110 meters per second. That's its um, initial horizontal velocity of the package pretty much. So we get U of X is 110 meters per second. Right, so we can find our distance easily. So just S equals 110 times 3.9, 3.91 and S, I'll put X here, is approximately 400.1 meters. Now the question is asked to the nearest whole number. So if you just put that there, you wouldn't get the mark. You have to put 430.0. So that's the whole number. So 430.0 meters. So that's the nearest whole number. We don't want any point ones or anything. If it asks for, if it asks for one decimal place, yes, you could put that. But it's asked for the nearest whole number, so just put that. All right, that was a basic um, motion question with the helicopter. I'll be doing another one that involves an inclined plane. Thank you so much for watching. If you had any questions, leave them in the comments. Thank you.